Testing one, two, and the trois. Hi guys, welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. Today, very exciting video, as I'm gonna give you a home tour of what's inside the Pico Neo 3 Pro, in case you're curious about what's inside of there, or perhaps you're thinking about getting one yourself, who knows? But before, just a reminder that we are doing an awesome giveaway in celebration of the 10,000 subscribers on the channel, with HP, who is sponsoring us a brand new HP Reverb G2, so one of you will be able to win this and also cyber shoes are sponsoring one of their brand new pair of cyber shoes and will also be giving away game keys and a whole bunch of things so do make sure you enable the bell after you subscribe so youtube can let you know when we upload the competition entry video all right without further ado let's hop into the pico and do the home tour i'll see you in just a moment all right, so we're back inside now. By the way, guys, if you go to the VR Essentials YouTube channel, you can then click on playlists and you can go and find the Pico Neo 3 Pro playlist. Uh, so a uh, number of videos that we've done, we've done, of course, the unboxing and first impressions through the lens of ByteDance Pico Neo 3 Pro versus the HP Reverb G2 and the also Pico Neo 2 using the wireless streaming to the PC, so that was a very interesting video. Uh, we also did the one with Ultraleap, which redefines uh, hand tracking technology, which is compatible with the Pico Neo 3 Pro. And also just a couple of days ago, uh, or yesterday I released a video, uh, which was all about comparing the HP Reverb G2 with the Pico Neo 3 Pro using the 4K display cable. Is the HP Reverb G2 um, dethroned or is the Pico Neo 3 Pro, you know, still not there. Do go and watch that video to find out. And by the way, very sorry if you can hear some noise in the background. Uh, there's some works going on in a, in a in a car park not far away. So uh, now let's let's start the actual tour. And there are some timestamps below, guys. Uh, so do skip to wherever you want to go. So let me just bring the files up. There we go. So first of all, uh, we go inside. Now the graphics are more or less the same as what you see them here. They're very nice, the graphics. Do go and check out the video about uh, the graphics in terms of standalone. You might see a little bit of compression because it's filmed at HD 20, uh, 1920p, uh, you know, as, as per the format. So first of all, I just want to show you. So this is the first thing that you'll see uh, when you go into the home. I will do a separate video about, uh, you know, powering, powering the headset and what to do. Uh, in terms of the um, play space and setting up everything. So do enable the bell after you subscribe. So you'll see the highlights in front of you, which is basically uh, top apps that you would use. And then on the right hand side, you see the panel here is basically some announcement or news by Pico or by ByteDance as to what they're doing. And, you know, uh, it could be anything in terms of software, technology, new products, and all this kind of stuff. So in the home environment, now of course, when you put the VR headset on, it's not going to look so um, round on the edges. It's much, it feels much more flat, of course. Uh, this is the rendering of the actual recording. So uh, you see the couch over there. You can't pick up the object. So here I'm trying to pick up an object. Uh, you can't walk closer to it. Um, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then at the back there, you can see these images uh, floating around. This is actually the background, which you can change. Now, the graphics are very nice. The images, the VR360 uh, images are very nice, uh, very crisp, very sharp. I have to say, no motion sickness, no blurriness, very high resolution. And, you know, you can also, of course, import your own files and then you can change how to, you know, whatever you want to look at the back. And of course, I will be doing a separate video on that as well. So do enable the bell after you subscribe so you don't miss that video in the future uh, as part of our FAQ videos. And then my favorite one is the next one. This one, of course, you can see uh, Jupiter over there, which is really awesome. And Earth, I mean, wow, it just looks really amazing. And, and you know, the picture is so sharp and so nice. All that's missing in this one actually is the earth rotating and it's like a VR 360 video. I think there will be look, there, there will come, you know, sometime in the future, maybe a couple years from now, uh, where you see some shooting stars and, you know, all that kind of stuff, but not too bad, I have to admit. Uh, so let me go to the next video now, which is the APK uh, app library. So basically the app library is where you would have um, uh, basically the apps that, 
that you would use. It's like a shortcut area, basically. So uh, you have your store you can access. Now, these, by the way, uh, just before I, I launch them, these are where you're on. For example, if you're a developer and you you drag and drop your file, or you sorry, you um, uh, you burn you you expose your file directly into the Pico, which you can do. Uh, basically, this is where they will be. So you can access your Unity files if you're building a game directly from here, which is basically this is my file. So if you go in, into Inside, so this is just a preview of the app that I'm building with um, my uh, my friend. So let me just. Let me just make it so there's no sound, so there's no copyright flagging. Um, and then the quality, you know, in terms of, this is from Unity, guys, uh, and it's on medium. It's not even on ultra or anything like that. So the quality is pretty good. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of choppiness here, but honestly speaking, in the headset, there is no choppiness whatsoever. Uh, you know, and the file is pretty big. It's about a gig plus. So, you know, and everything is rendering pretty well. Uh, you could see the fog just there. Uh, you know, the lights and everything. So yeah, no, no issues whatsoever uh, when you're loading your own apps from, you know, from Unity inside of the Pico. So then we, uh, we exit. So I exit, I quit the app there. And then uh, inside of here, so this is where you can access your streaming assistant. So the streaming assistant basically is when you want to stream to the PC. So access, for example, Steam VR, and you know you you want to stream. Uh, you know you can stream in two different ways. First way could be wirelessly. Uh, now I recommend you are uh, near your router if you're going to do that, not away. Otherwise, you will have some latency. And I will do a separate video on how to set that up and everything. So again, make sure to enable your bell after you subscribe for that video. Um, or you can stream using the DP cable. Now, if you want to know the graphics quality compared to the HP Reverb G2 with using the 4K cable, um, by all means, go and check out the video in the link description below in the pinned comments, uh, where you'll find the timestamps uh, as well. So let's go back here. So let me just press play very quickly. Uh, so basically, yeah, so you can choose to have uh, wired or you can choose to have wireless and then you'll go through the steps. And as I mentioned before, I'll do a separate video uh, teaching you guys as to how to actually uh, do that as today we're doing, uh, you know, a, a home tour, right? All right, here we go. So let me just exit of this because I believe there is nothing else to show from here. Uh, so the next thing that I'm going to show you is the App Store. By the way, content creators, there's two different ways uh, that you can record uh, your the recordings of uh, the format of the recordings when you're recording inside the Pico. And I'll show this to you in just a while. But at the moment, it's what we call four to three or one to one, uh, which is like a square. And you can also record in 16 by nine. And I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. So do hang around until the end of the video for for that. So when you click the App Store, you can choose to create an account and log in, which you will need to do if you want to purchase apps, of course, it's a bit like the Oculus uh, Meta, you know, thing or the Vive port where you need to create your own or Steam. We need to create an account, but you don't need this account in order to power the actual headset itself. OK, now there is another video in the uh, unboxing and first impressions where I talk about uh, data privacy. Now, you need to note uh, very importantly, because some people had concerns about this uh, ByteDance for the European side and the Western side, US, Europe, anything outside of China, basically. They don't store their data inside of China. Uh, they store it in the US and they have a backup in Singapore. So the Chinese can't actually request or see uh, your data from outside China. Just so you know, there is no data sharing with the Chinese government. However, in China, if the Chinese government requests for it, of course, uh, ByteDance either don't have a choice to do it or if they don't want to do it, then they would have to close. Uh, I mean, they may be asked to close their account in China, but it would not hinder anything outside of China. So I need you to understand that is very important. So as a Westerner, your data is much more safe in the hands of ByteDance Pico Interactive than it is in any hands of Meta Facebook. Uh, you know, I just wanted to put it out there so that you 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 get the you know the full facts in terms of data privacy. Um, so once you log in and stuff, I mean, here I'm not logged in just to, you know, just FYI. Let me see if I can 
Okay, so this is just to do that. Where's the window? Oh, it's here. Okay, so click again. All right. So uh, inside of the app, uh, I'm going to show you all the different apps that are available from the Western uh, Western market. So let me just backtrack very, very quickly. So we have 11 Table Tennis VR. Sintra, and please note developers that most of the apps uh, marketed here are in Chinese. So, because ByteDance markets most of their apps to the China market or Asian market. So a lot of them have actually opted to translate everything and adapt everything in Chinese. Just so you know, even Synthriders here, everything's in Chinese except for Synthriders name, but then they have the Chinese name under it. Then we have uh, Contractors, Red Matter, once red matter there uh, then if you go so basically this selection here is a uh, recommended uh, the recommended selection okay sorry I, i'm not able to to zoom in uh just to let you know so if you of course watch on a hd display uh you you will have a better view uh so then if we go into the actual apps now there is a way to filter by all experiences only at the moment and in all prices you can filter by free or chargeable so uh, the apps that are available um, at the moment. So let me just skip to, okay, oh, there we go. So we have uh, Prison Boss VR, uh, Sports VR. We have a demo of some kind. Sorry, I can't read. Uh, Operation Serpent, uh, Jupiter Guard, which is a really cool app, I have to say. Cubism. Um, the finals over is this cricket game, uh, Warplanes, World War One fight, Racket NX, my favorite, one of my favorite apps, Angry Birds, uh, Eleven Table Tennis VR, Sam and Max, uh, uh, Pixel Ripped guys, which we we've done uh, an interview with them. It will be coming out on the uh, Meta Business Podcast, so do make sure you enable the bell for that video as well. Uh, Drunken Bar Fight, Space Slurpees, good to see them there. Uh, Seps Diner, X Booster, Gloomy Eyes. I really recommend you watch Gloomy Eyes, guys. Very cool VR 360 uh, animated film. 1976, back to Midway. Uh, this is Song Beater. I haven't tried that. Uh, Rest in Pieces. <laughs> Interesting name. Uh, Sariento VR. We all know what that is. Uh, Art Pulse. I haven't tried that. Smash Drums demo. Smash Drums is excellent. Uh, Apex Contrast. Ninja, Leg Ninja Legends, Contractors VR, Stardust VR, Legendary Hunters VR, Golf Pool VR, uh, Snow Fortress, Wonder Glade, Once. Uh, there is also Rhythm in Bullets, Death Horizon, which is quite famous, Deism, quite a classic one as well, Bullet Roulette, Guns N' Roses, Escape Legend VR, Legacy VR, sorry, Crisis VR Gate, oh my god, that's such a hard game, uh, Last Labyrinth, Odo Trip, excellent game, Odo Trip too. Uh, Beat, Beat Blaster, O Shape, Death Lab, Crisis VR Brigade 1, which is also freaking hard. Apocalypse Rider Neo 2, uh, Tuto, which is fantastic, or Tsuro, uh, Zuma, uh, The Rabbit Hole, haven't tried that one. Synth Riders, of course, an excellent game. Shooty Skies, Rico Shooter, Reiko's Fragments, Red Matter, Party Pumper, Hangman, Nature Treks, excellent. Gadgeteer, Fuji, Fuji is very good too. End Space, Down the Rabbit Hole, very nice app. Discovery, The Exorcism, uh, sorry, The Exorcist Le Legion VR, Bait, which is very cool. Fingers Minigame, and Flappy, Flappy VR. And then we have some normal apps, which is basically your, uh, you know, work or uh, what do we call it? Uh, you know, work, work, cross collaboration, you know, those kind of business enterprise apps. So we have Styly, Virtuoso. Then we have Glue, Clear VR Player, Custom, uh, Snowball Cloud. Engage, very cool. Engage also. Glue also and Meeting VR, very good. 3D Vista VR, Meeting VR, VR Direct, uh, C2 Phobia, C2 Num, uh, C2 Addict, I think that's a poker game one. C2 Neuro, 
C2 Brain, C2 Companion, C2 Hypno, C2 Physio, Simlab VR Viewer, C2 Drive, uh, Rio Nuba, and Chimera Reorder. So then you have the list of all the purchases that you'll be able to see once you've logged in. And then you'll search as well, and then there's a login button. Uh, search, you can search for anything, basically, and your login thing there. All right, so let's go to the next one. I really hope that the sound is okay, because with the, the works going on out there, man. Okay, so we go to the file manager. Now, this is basically where you'll find all your various different files, uh, both your pictures and your movies, and all these kind of things. You'll also, so by, you can filter by video, images, and APKs. Uh, and you can also go to a directory and open up the di various different folders here as well. So this is what you would see basically on your PC, exactly the same thing. All right, so next we're gonna go to the cinema file. So basically, uh, we just went through the file manager uh, where you can seek for all your different stuff. And by the way, um, so you can share your files wirelessly, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna try this out, I haven't tried it yet. So again, enable the bell notification as I will do a special tutorial uh, to show you how this is actually done. I'm pretty interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, have uh, third-party storage. So you can plug in uh, SSD or uh, you can plug in, you know, an external hard drive or also a thumbnail, uh, sorry, a thumb drive to your headset as well. So that's pretty neat too. And you can also hook up to your network. So that's really awesome. I think enterprises are definitely gonna like this. And of course you can hook up directly uh, via a video link uh, to your computer from the headset uh, using, uh, well, you can actually use a USB uh, thumb drive, uh, sorry, a USB cable, uh, USB-C cable to your, to your Pico, so it work absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like when you wanna load your files inside of the actual now, if you want to watch a movie or you want to see, you know, how how it looks like. So after you press on your actual screen recording, let's say, or whatever, MP4 kind of file, what's going to happen is you're going to be transported inside of a movie theater, which looks pretty neat, to be honest. And there's a whole bunch of different things that you'll be able to do. Uh, the graphics inside are pretty sharp. The seats are pretty sharp. You can't do like in big screen VR where basically... Um, you know, you, um, uh, let me just bring up the file again, where, you know, you can change seats, like the exact seat you want to go to, but you can, however, choose to, uh, let me just show you here. Uh, here, okay. So let me just take off the sound so we don't have any infringement. So for example, here we're at the back of the cinema, as you can see. So you can choose to be at the middle, like here is the middle, uh, here is the front, so this is the middle. And this is the back. Or you can be at the very front of the actual theater. So it gives you some options in terms of you know, where you want to be, and the graphics are pretty good. So this is what I was talking to you, uh, where you can change uh, whether you want to be at the front, in the middle of the actual cinema. And there's actually three environments which you can choose, by the way, just to let you know. So you can choose to have your subtitles, if you have subtitles. You can also look at where your, your playlist um, so here you can choose the uh, format. So if it's non-panoramic, 180 pano, 360 pano, uh, or fisheye kind of kind of lens, also 2D, 3D, SPS, or 3D TV. So you know you really have a lot of options, and this is the environment. So you can choose to go in the void. So the void, uh, the, sorry, let's do the beach first. So the beach. Now the beach is very blurry, to be honest with you. The, the picture is really not good quality whatsoever. Um, you know, excuse me, I highly suggest that you don't use the beach because it's just going to give you a big, big headache. Um, so I didn't like that at all. 
Uh, but, you know, it's a shame it's not good quality. Uh, or you can go to the void. Now, the void will just be all completely black. Uh, so, you know, no distractions around you, basically. Uh, at the moment, as far as I know, you can't have other people inside. So this is purely a solo experience uh, in terms of, you know, going inside. And you can also adjust, as I mentioned before, the uh, also, sorry, the brightness, uh, the saturation uh, of the, the actual uh, player as well. You can change the speed. Uh, you can also adjust the viewing. So if you wanted to put more on the side or in the center, you can do those kind of things as well. So here you can adjust the saturation, uh, the contrast. And if it's a 3D, you can have like, whether you want a 3D effect or whether you don't want it to have a 3D effect as well. So a lot of, a lot of options when it comes to uh, the actual, you know, cinema, cinema screen. Let's go back to here. I'm going to show you the mini panel. So the mini panel is this. Uh, basically, this is the panel that you see uh, when you first log in as well, which is basically a little menu bar here. It will tell you the um, number, the percentage of battery inside of the headset. By the way, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours max to recharge the headset, but I will do a separate video on battery uses as well uh, with the uh, controllers. Then it tells you the controller battery uh, down here and whether you know it's connected. And then this is the, the boundary which you can actually change uh, by clicking on here. And I'll show you how to set your boundary in a separate video as well. So do, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, hit the enable button after you subscribe. Now, it's actually very clear inside the headset, just so you know. So this is due to the recording, I think, perhaps for privacy reasons. Uh, so they block out some black here, and then here is completely blurred out. But normally, there's no issue whatsoever. It's completely clear. So the pass through is uh, black and white. I wouldn't say it's great clarity, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, it's pretty much what you see just now. So very blurry. You can't do any mixed reality like you would do uh, on the Quest at the moment, uh, even though you do have some, you know, uh, L and right to show you which controller uh, it is. Uh, and it's very easy to do the pass through. They have upgraded from the Pico Neo 2 uh, to do your play space with the boundary. It's much more fluid. Uh, everything works much, much better than the Neo 2, man. Really uh, great job in terms of the uh, development on that. So if we go to the settings now, because we haven't done that, so this is the settings here that you can access very easily. Uh, so for the controllers, it will tell you, you know, left or right, and also uh, whether they're binded with the little, uh, sorry, I just skipped by mistake. Let me go, just go back very quickly. Here we go. Um, so, sorry, let me just go back here. So you'll see with the little icons here, the green to say connected. Uh, and also you can go to co controller configuration. Uh, so if we click on that, uh, then, you know, uh, you can choose your left hand being uh, uh, more dominant or the right one. Check the update as well, uh, on bind or bind from here. And then also device info on the left, right hand side here to check the PUI update, the devices update. So if you click on there, it will lead you to another panel where you can update the, the device here. So if you go to Bluetooth, this is where you have all your Bluetooth things you can list. Uh, you display, you can adjust the contrast, the color, the brightness. Now you won't see it here on the recording, but in the headset it's very clear. Uh, by the way, you, you notice how now it's a 1619 uh, recording video, right? So I changed this in the settings and now it takes the entire window instead of the little square, right? So this you can change in the settings. I'll show you how just now. Uh, so for eye protection, it will actually be much more yellow. And funny enough, standard is brighter than bright, just to let you know. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's quite funny. So you can't see the changes, unfortunately, uh, in the headset. It, I mean, on the recording, screen recording, it looks exactly, exactly the same. The lab is basically where you have your experiments. So the battery saver, you can choose to have battery uh, saving mode. However, it will affect the graphics quality as well. So I'll do a separate video on all this as well. So do hit the enable bell after you subscribe. Now, recline mode, uh, which you can enable, basically means you won't have any motion tracking with the controllers uh, to the headset. So, uh, you know, sometimes controllers might not work uh, as well. Uh, so I suggest leaving recline mode off. Because you can use the headset uh, buttons on the side, um, you know, to navigate through the 
through the thing. So perhaps you could use it, for example, if you don't want to use your controllers uh, when you're you know, viewing a, a, a film or something, maybe. 90 hertz, I definitely, uh, I definitely advise you put it on because you'll have much a more comfortable experience, less motion sickness, better graphics, uh, better motion smoothness. So definitely suggest you leave 90 hertz refresh mode on, otherwise it will go automatically to 72. And quick perspective, I'm not quite sure what that does, by the way. Uh, I, I tried to experiment, I didn't see any notice noticeable differences. So I'll ask Pico for clarification and do a future update video. So in the Generals tab, a lot of different things, uh, app management, this is where you can delete all the various different apps basically, uh, you know, that you might see on, uh, you know, that you've installed and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, you can view by time of use and all these kind of things. Uh, control vibration, you can adjust the haptics uh, vibration, so that's pretty good. You can also adjust the language, and a whole bunch of different languages here uh, that you can choose from. So. Very European friendly, I would say, but it, it would be good to add more, of course, uh, if they can do that in the future. Uh, time, so you can adjust your time based on your time zone. Uh, you'll also find screencast, screen recording. So uh, here, basically, single eye means, you know, whether you just want one big square or you want two little round things, uh, you know, when you're, when you're recording. So the aspect ratio at the moment, as you can see, is 1619, but you can change to 11, which is 43, uh, which is a little square. Resolution, you can change to 480p, 720p, or 1080p, which is what we're recording at the moment. Of course, it will affect file size. Um, so here, record a microphone, uh, sound during screen recording. So you can choose to, you know, for example, I could have actually use the Pico to do the recording as I was doing it. And I will do a testing because there is an issue uh, doing air link uh, or, or bite dance link uh, to the computer when using the microphone. So I will do some future testing as well here and do a follow up video. So do hit the, um, you know, uh, enable bell notification. So YouTube tells you when I upload that video. And then the audio settings to screencasting as well. You can just adjust from sound output from a headset to sound output from receiver, sound output from headset and receiver as well. So it's good that they give you the flexibility here when you're casting to a computer or a TV or a phone. And then UI clarity, uh, so movement tracking here again, you can enable it or disable it. So if you don't want your headset uh, to track to uh, various different things, then you can disable it. But I, I suggest you always have this on. UI clarity, I suggest you leave it off because when you put it on, what's going to happen is basically in the lens, everything is going to have some uh, on the side of the, on the edges of the pixels, you'll see some color bleeding with yellow and green and blue, and sometimes some red too. It doesn't look good. It gives a big headache, especially on the bottom part of the headset, uh, sorry, of the lenses. I definitely suggest you do not enable this for sure. Keep it disabled. Uh, and then after the play boundary, so, you can also decide to enable or disable your play boundary, uh, which is okay, you know, if you want to do a, honestly, you don't need to disable it because to be honest with you, they give you good options for seating position and things. So yeah, there's no need to disable it. I suggest that you, but you can, uh, you can adjust the floor level if you need to from here as well, which is very handy. And I'll show you how to do all that, uh, how to adjust floor level and things uh, later. So here you have your contact us, Android version, software version, device serial number, memory, storage. Uh, you know, it tells you exactly how many, how much storage you've taken, all this. It doesn't tell you exactly what is taking your storage though. It just says how much storage, uh, you know, uh, you, you, uh, you're using in the device. So it'd be good to know what exactly is taking your storage. I think they'll be quite useful. Uh, feedback, log records as well. Uh, and then just, re you can also reset uh, your, your headset to factory settings from here as well. Which I will not do for, for, for this video, of course. And all your details, your headset will be there. And then there's also for developer, now to enable developer mode, you're gonna have to click, uh, I think on general, like 13 times until you see the developers tab. The developers tab, developers tab does not show up initially. I will do a separate video for developer things and how to hook up 
to the PC if you want to develop an app using Unity, for example. Uh, so do uh, look out for that video in the future as well. So there's various different things uh, available, uh, USB debugging, USB connection, industry settings, which I'll go through very quickly uh, now. So USB debugging, I really recommend you leave it on. Choose USB configuration to transfer files or to charge the device so uh, you can do one or the other. But honestly speaking, with charge this device, I can still transfer files, so I don't really understand what this is there for. I think it's a bit redundant, this thing. Industry settings, so here you can switch your options, enable, disable a whole bunch of different things from unplug USB to shut down, auto sleep mode, charging while using, button configuration in 2D mode, USB plug-in boot mode, shortcut switch. Uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things, accept upgrade and updates, mobile phone, casting service, eye protection mode, info of the VR frame rate, which I think is very useful. In fact, I think I'm gonna enable that one uh, for testing. Fast play boundary, PUI volume prompt, uh, PUI controller connection prompt, uh, you know, all these things you can enable, disable. Show navigation bar, you can also enable, disable that. App control, uh, startup file manager, uh, launches app kiosk mode. So at the moment, basically what's really good for as a developer is you can really customize your app launcher as well, your home environment, to be really what you want it to be. Uh, you know, so if you have an organization uh, or something and you want it to be your own custom home to your branding, you can do that and you can do it from here, I think is my understanding. So that is actually pretty cool. So a lot of different things uh, they can do. System properties, it'll tell you exactly your device info and all that kind of stuff. And then let's go to the quick panel, I call it, uh, which is basically a little panel you can access by pressing one of the buttons. Uh, so let's just exit from here, there we go. So this is the quick panel. Oop. Sorry, I pressed the button by mistake. So I press one of the buttons and then, so I close this. Okay, and then this appears. So basically from here is where you can do your recording. You can also, I'll show you in, a, in an updated video how you can record it and stuff. Uh, but basically you can uh, double tap on your headset as well, a specific button. And then you can also click from here to uh, do your recordings. And then you can also one tap clean up. So you can basically clean up the memory and the cache of your headset by hitting that button as well. I believe I do that, yeah. Memory clean up is complete, there we go. It shows you of course the time, the number of battery inside. Uh, you can adjust the brightness, the volume. Of course the volume you can also adjust from, you can't see it on the recording but you'll see it in the headset when you put it on your face. Uh, you know, in terms of adjusting the, the, the brightness. And of course, the brighter it is, the more, um, you know, the, the, the more memory, the, the batteries will go down faster. And again, you can access your uh, play space from here if you want to adjust the boundary or if you want to disable it. And funny enough, my, you know, my entire uh, Pico is in China, is in English, but here, the little screenshot, here and I'll send this to Pico. Um, so let me just bring up this. There we go. And then bring up this. Just do a little screenshot and I'm gonna send it to Pico uh, so that they they can update this because I think they may have forgotten to, to update this. Uh, it's quite funny that. So I know, I know that that is, means close. So, because um, I lived in China for about 12 years. So that's basically the end of the, of the settings. So then here there's you. So once you log in, uh, you'll be able to get all your profile details and all that kind of stuff. I'll do a separate video on that as well uh, in the future. So do, do look out for it. So that basically, uh, you know, that's basically, that's, that's basically it guys. That's the home tour of the Pico Neo 2, uh, Pico Neo 3 Pro, sorry. Uh, now the biggest difference between the Pico Neo 3 Pro and the Pico Neo 3 Pro I is of course the foveate rendering, which means that whatever you see up close will be clear, whatever is in the background will be blurred out. I wish 
that was a headset that was sent to me. But of course, uh, developers also need to implement the SDK. So it doesn't, you know, work automatically, uh, to be honest with you. So I think it's fine. Of course, it's fine that they send me the uh, Pico Neo 3 Pro and it makes much more sense uh, unless I was perhaps developing, uh, you know, uh, the app myself. But at the end of the day, thank you, Pico, again, for sending me the headset. I mean, you guys are super awesome. I love working with you guys. And guys, as I mentioned before, remember to hit the uh, enable bell after you subscribe so YouTube tells you when I upload the video about the brand new HP Reverb G2 that will send you, that they will send you. Uh, one of you can win this and someone else will, because there'll be three lucky winners or four lucky winners uh, winning either an HP Reverb G2 or a brand new pair of cyber shoes, or I might do a $50 voucher for keys and also there'll be uh, some specific keys uh, that I'll be giving out as well from various different game studios who will be coming on board this lucky draw commemorating the 10,000 subscribers. So guys, make sure you share this video in your YouTube, in your Reddit, in your LinkedIn, in your Facebook, everywhere on your social media so that basically we get more people to the channel because we're almost already at 10,000 subscribers, guys. Oof, I am pumped. All right, I'll see you guys in the comments below. Remember to leave comments. Let me know what you think about all this stuff. And uh, yeah, so I'll chat with you in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in, a, in another video very soon. Take it easy. Bye, guys.